like this my shit. All the girls took the feeling like this. Few times to get around the track, so I'm not good. I ain't no hard the back girl. Wow. Da din din da din din da da din din da din din da din 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 Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction to this. This is Corbin. He ain't no hollow back girl. Instagram. It's so juicy. Today we're reacting to a uh, juice for everyone. What are you doing? I'm doling out free juice to everybody. <gasps> and you get some juice. And you get some juice. By <clears throat> Shush. Say this name. Shashi Thum Tharor. I know. Why, why do we know that name? You recognize him? Yeah. He's the guy. The, we we saw his um, speech of speech reparations. Reparations, from, yes. From the British. Right. This is a video, I think he just released it just a few days ago. Thando's Guide to Indian English. Interesting. Obviously, this guy's, I think, not only a politician, but I think he's mostly known for being a scholar. I think yes. that's actually what he's mo mostly right, known right. for. Right, right. Um, and so he's really smart. We love that was actually really early on that we reacted. It, it was, was like one of the first one couple the first months, yeah. I guess, uh, that we were doing it. I think and it was probably February of yeah. 2019. And it was a great speech. Great speech. Love the speech. So I'm expecting some intellectual conversation. Stim. You late. You late us. Titillate my brain. Stimulate my titillate. None of these don't exist in any Indian language and don't exist in any other form of the English language, like Brinjal. Right. So in the Western world, it's eggplant, right? And in India, there is no Indian language where it's called Brinjal. It's called Bengal, it's called Vaidhinya and Malayalam, Begun and Bangla. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't have anyone saying Brinjal except in Indian English. You've introduced India to many words like Rodomontade and Farago and Hippopotamonstrous sesquipedalia phobia. Mm. So I'd like you to introduce us to one more of your favorite words. Ah, well, you know, when a kid asked me that as a, as a gathering in a school in Trivandrum, I told him the word that I would introduce him to was to read. And he'd come across <laughs> his own words. I wouldn't have to spoon feed him a word. Um, but there are lots of, lots of interesting words. As you know, yesterday I, I, I reminded the nation of a word called Snollygoster. Which um, is an 1845 American sounds like something made up, meaning a shrewd and unprincipled politician. There you go. Yeah. Uh, of one particular chief minister jumped ship and went and joined the party he'd campaigned against. And when something similar seemed to be happening overnight on on the weekend, I dusted this out and said, "Latest usage today." Um, so that's one word which I think uh, at least a lot of people now seem to be familiar with. In yes. India. Another word that I've been fond of in the sense that I feel Love could be used more often, especially in our politics, is defenestrate. Defenestrate means literally to throw out of the window, but it's meant to be used to simply mean to reject, to discard, to expel, all right. of those things. And I love that word. I've been I using it that. since my college days. I love that. And I'm surprised that it's not more widely used. So defenestrate. Defenestrate. Uh, it defenestrate the political opportunities from our politics, for example, would be a good thing. <laughs> Are there any other English words that you've invented or would like to coin? <laughs> no, no, I coined one or two in the Great Indian novel. Too embarrassing to mention in public. In public. Uh, but they never caught on. So we can we can no, please tell us. <laughs> no, 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 I can't. Not on TV. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is going to remain uh, nice. on the net as a permanent indictment. Oh, so it's and like I coined a slightly <laughs> naughty word in the Great Indian novel, which I'll whisper to you and you can go and look it up later. Okay. But you won't catch me saying it. Okay. All right. <laughs> but then oh, I want to know it. Come on. Term which I wanted to see getting more popular, uh, which is not really a new word particularly, but uh, 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 as Minister of State for External Affairs, I suggested in a couple of speeches that India was moving on beyond non-alignment to multi-alignment. But I said it kind of fell with a thud, and no one took it seriously, and no one quoted it and got no attention. Now it's come back into vogue, and I was complimenting my friend, the Foreign Minister Jayashankar. Then in one of his speeches, he used the term multi-alignment. So 10 years after I had tried and failed, it may be coming into circulation. Right. That's fantastic. That's an exclusive for the English. Why did, that you know the English Thank you so yeah. much. Now, another subject which is close to your heart is about the British looting India. 
and loot is one of the words that you have written and spoken about in the past. Could you uh, talk to us about some of the other words that the British have looted from India? Oh God, there are so many. I mean, there must be, without exaggeration, close to a thousand words in the complete Ox the big fat Oxford English Dictionary that have come from um, Indian languages. But some I wouldn't really count as English words because they're very obviously unchanged Indian words that they put in. Some, however, though very much current in English usage, and many English people don't realize have come from India, to the Indian ear are very obviously Indian, like jungle, bangla, um, you know, things that, that guru, uh, yoga. yoga yeah. I mean, many people, oddly enough, in the Western world don't realize that these words have come from Indian languages. But then there are the really surprising words, uh, words that don't actually look or sound Indian the way the British pronounce them, uh, which are actually derived from, and of course mispronounced, um, Indian words. So um, one that I particularly was struck by when I discovered it about 10, 15 years ago was shampoo. Because shampoo came from the British saying champo when they got their servants to wash their hair. So press and knead and rub your hair is champo. Everything was an in, in, imperative. And then I'm going for a shampoo became I'm going for a shampoo. And that's how shampoo came into being. I believe a Bengali by the name of Sheikh Din Muhammad took it to... Took it. And, and he actually set up an entire series spa. of salons or spas yeah. Yeah. where he offered the shampoo. Exactly. Right. Wow. Uh, Sheikh Din Muhammad from Bihar, actually. Yeah. But Bihar was, was part, part of the Bengal 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 presidency. That's you what like I to take credit for everything. Wow. You're, you're forgetting. You're both smart. Yeah, you're smart. The other one was um, uh, cash, which oh. comes from Tamil. I mean, I had no idea that cash came from. I mean, I, I could guess that malagatoni soup was actually malagatani, which simply means hot pepper water. And that's in Tamil. But uh, that cash had come from uh, a Tamil word was a discovery to me. So things like that, I think there are quite a few. Um, even Wikipedia has over 100 uh, from various Indian languages. And if you go to a more serious sort of philolinguistic study, I'm sure you get several hundred. Right. Katamaran is another word. That's again from ah. Tamil Katamaram. In fact, Katta is literally to cut and Maram is wood. Right. So um, that's what a uh, Katamaran is from. Yes. Uh, and then, of course, if you want to uh, look at Kamabant, a very elegant English gentleman wearing yes. something around his waist. Yes. It's actually Kamarbant. Just as, by the way, this may surprise you. The British steal you see everything. pictures of these Mexican revolutionaries like Zapata with bandanas around the head. It comes from bandana. By exactly. Yeah. yeah. And bandana. bangles comes from bangli. In yes. Yeah. Yeah. Bangles, I think you could guess, too. Yeah. yeah. Jungle, bangle, etc. Right. Okay. Do you know the word for a type of clothing which is inspired by the neighborhood in of Bombay called Domri? No, I didn't know that. There is a neighborhood called Dongri. And that's the Dangari, I suppose. The Dangaris yeah. are from Dongri. So there is a, 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 an expression that is no longer really current in English for a big uh, commotion, confusion racket uh -huh. called a Dulali. The Dulali. And that comes from Devlali. I, I believe the also mentioned the Jatta, which is the Dhanpur, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Right. And uh, indigo, the word indigo too comes from the Greek word for India. Or Indian. You've also written about Indianisms like native place. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your other favorites? Well, there's so many. Uh, some yeah. of them they just slip into conversation quite routinely. Um, my favorite for the longest time was pre porn because I thought I'd invented it. But um, we, we, you know, air dash is another Indianism. Uh, then the newspaper reports about police uh, tracking down criminals always refer to history sheeters. There is a criminal with a long record of crimes. It's called a history sheet. Where that's comes from is all Indian English. Then there's, um, of course, the expressions, you know, yeah. of which uh, the most famous one is please adjust. <laughs> How kindly adjust, actually. Yeah. Not please adjust, kindly adjust. And uh, that is when a, a fifth person sits on a bench bed for two yeah. <laughs> and says kindly adjust. Yeah. Uh, then there's also uh, yeah. the classic, you know, we are like this only. <laughs> so you can come up with a few of those. So uh, after the US, India has the second highest number of English speakers and with our birth rate, I think we're soon going to have the highest number of English speakers. Yeah, well, the US has an immigration rate, so they've already reached, I think, over 300 million. Okay. Whereas our census severely undercounts us. Yeah. So we may find it difficult to have bragging rights over the actual numbers. Right. Because for example, in, in the Indian census, I'm not considered an English speaker. Since the census only asked me what's my mother tongue, it says right. Malayalam, so I'm not listening. At least the year that I did the census, there was no supplementary question saying what other languages do you know. 
What? So they've underestimated the number. Seriously, oh, they've 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 underestimated for sure. Them. Census claim is two percent speak English. Right. Yeah. Which is because the population think is their mother's uh, tongue. So I would say the reality is somewhere between ten and twenty percent. Twenty percent. With varying degrees of competence and fluency, there's probably more English uh, speakers than population. Now, if you take that number, then you're looking at about 260 million, which is still lower than America. So, but I think that with our birth rate, yes, we have a billion to, people you know, exceed. <laughs> All right, good for you and your faith in our birth yeah. rate. So, <laughs> <laughs> you have to be a shirt. <laughs> Growing number of English speakers in India and with our <laughs> growing influence in the world, do you think that uh, passengers on the London underground wearing cashmere sweaters will ask other passengers to kind of adjust? adjust? Will uh, New Yorkers ask their meetings to be pre poned <laughs> And will tanned Torontonians describe their complexion as Wheatish? Wheatish? Oh, that's a good one. Do you think that these words will find their way into the rest no, of the world? No, you know, actually, no. I'll tell you what, one of the strengths as well of English is the fact that there are so many regional variants. That, you know, there's a very distinctive Australian English. Yes. Which even New Zealanders can tell apart from a New Zealanders yes. English, so you probably can't. Uh, okay. And there are can, real yeah. distinctions between the English spoken around London and the English There's spoken around English Yorkshire, within the uh, States, let alone here. Scotland or Ireland. Yeah. Uh, and all these variations have what makes it distinctive, and therefore Indian English right. has every right to be the as distinctive thing. as yeah. Irish English Absolutely. or American English. Um, and it's curious, for example, that in India, at least uh, for the longest time, I've not heard it much since returning to India, but when I left India, people still spoke in furlongs. How far are you? If you want to just a couple of furlongs down the road. Huh. But no one in England has used furlong for a like hundred years. Yeah. So we had a word in English. Yeah. Then there are these Indian words which don't exist in any Indian language and don't exist in any other form of the English language, like brinjal. Right. So in the Western world, it's eggplant. Right. And in India, there is no Indian language where it's called brinjal. It's called Bengal, it's called Vaidhinya in Malayalam, Begun in Bangla. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't have anyone saying brinjal except in Indian English. Right. So where did it come from? I haven't looked it up. But the fact is, it's an Indian English word Benog. that only exists in Benog. Indian English. Uh, oh, that was it? Okay. Yeah, Abrupt, just like Banod. That's a new word that's been put in. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if he knows it. He's... Always just a, one. His voice is just oh, such an amazing voice. It's, it's the deepness of Amitabh Bakshan's, but obviously very proper. Very proper, almost to the point of being British. Yeah, well, he is British. Yeah, no, I mean, but it's not definitively. Yeah, like it's not a definitive. It's not like Sir John Gielgud, but it's really, really. Yeah, it's really, really close to like definitive, quintessential Queen's English British. Yeah, yeah, um, but he's he's always so fun to listen to. Um, I would like to listen to more of him. I would love to talk to him. That would just be a fun conversation. All my stars. Just to ask him just a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Just to, not and like, because I know he's a politician. Obviously, we would never ask him anything politics-wise. I would just want to know, like, dig into his mind. Mm -hmm. of like, <laughs> what are the things Where you know? Where is this word from? Yeah. Do you know where Bernard is from? <laughs> <laughs> what are the things you know? You could, yeah. could just sit and listen to him for hours. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's one of those smart people. I don't know if you remember, like, um, uh, Carnivus and Fleetwood. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were, you guys don't know who it is. No, those are they teachers, they teachers from, of course, I remember Carnivus um, and Fleetwood. Teachers at Harvest, where we were, and before. I disagree with him on a lot of stuff. But, Carnivus? And both of them. Oh. Um, but they're extremely intelligent, especially book-wise. Really Carnivus especially. Carnivus especially, yeah. But um, nothing against Fleetwood. No. Yeah. But he's just one of those people, like, he just, he knows. Knows everything. If there's something in, like, a book, he knows it. And I never did well in his class because he's, he didn't have really an adjustment in how he taught. You know? And so I was like, he, he, but I knew when he, like, when I was listening, I was like, yeah, he's really smart. He's Everybody smart. knew he, yeah, yeah. part of this was smart. <laughs> he's yeah. a smart guy. Yeah. This guy's actually, I think, can um, speak well and, and, to anybody, I think. Yeah. Um, he, he seems like one of those. And people. I think he also probably has a depth of knowledge in a myriad of topics. I think you oh, could yeah. bring up any topic with him, and he would probably tell you some things, and you go, I didn't know that. Oh, really? Yeah, no, I, I didn't know that either. And he'd just go, yeah, well, I'm this, and then that. In the same way that I would love to have a conversation with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> same kind of thing. Just same kind of a thing. He would, he would say stuff, and I'd be like, mm-hmm. 
Didn't know that. Keep talking. <laughs> I'm becoming a better person just listening to you talk. Well, luckily we've had a lot of those in our interviews. Oh my. We've had quite a few lessons. Yes. On multiple subjects, whether it's Chakraborty with her singing yep. or Niraj, Niraj and his, acting. His approach Anir to Kashyap acting. In, in, in his direct directing. Yeah. yeah. We've had so many where we just got to sit Stodges down and have a cure who's saying. Yeah. Really? It was basically just a class yeah. that we were sitting down. 100% accurate. It was yeah. Wonderful. wonderful. Uh, so I'd imagine talking to him would be that, that exact same way. So yep. if he has more speeches, stuff like that, let us know. Uh, let us know down below. Let us know down below. Let us know down below. Let us know. <laughs>